So, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to be talking today about a project that uh, I'm setting up with a colleague, Sie Christoffersen, she couldn't unfortunately be here. Uh, but we're going to be talking, well, we're, we're going to be investigating sheep, which is my kind of thing. But we're also going to go more into her textile production, which uh, in the Iron Age, which she is a specialist of. So, uh, and we also have a, a stand of the project that is going to study modern day sheep keeping as well, with an artist who's going to document that. But I'm not going to be talking about that. So this is really like, you know, we, we don't have res that much results. These are more kind of preliminary thoughts. I'm going to link up quite a lot to what you said about the Chenin or the wool chain, as we call it. So, um, but what I thought was quite compelling about this session is that we are really interested in, in those aspects that are invisible. And that's what I've been working with for a long time, trying to get at social relationships between humans and animals. And that's when I, I discovered sheep and cool textiles. Um, so our so there is one factor in this process that is often rendered invisible, and that is um, that's our starting point: is that textile production is impossible without sheep. But the life of sheep and their prerequisites to thrive are often invisible in textile studies. We consider sheep as sentient beings with the capacity to uh, act as co-domestic beings and, as such, co-creators of shared human-animal life worlds. Today and in the past, sheep are important animals in terms of social life, resource management and transhumans. And in Western Norway, where is, so which is where we're working, I forgot to, to put a map, but you will know where that is, right? Um, sheep have been very important in influencing the development of landscapes, of farm life, uh, of shaping the yearly cycle, providing wool for textile production, and trade from the early Bronze Age onwards until present day. And in this deep time frame, life and death of sheep have become, have become entangled with human life and human death, and are inextricably bound to the development of human society. So this paper considers how humans and sheep share a deep history of co-domestic traditional ways of living in Western Norway that goes back to the introduction of sheep in the Middle Neolithic until present day. Management practices of sheep include a wide variety of material culture, which is a result of primary and secondary product strategies and spans textiles, architecture and the ecosystem of pastures. Activities linked to the procurement of these products are social activities which create knots of sheep human materiality, leading to embodied pr products and practices. So, our project tries to examine and document past practices of co domestic human sheep life ways and death ways, um, how past societies and past human sheep practices have interwoven sheep materiality and humans in similar and different ways. So what we want to uh, discuss here is how perspectives uh, might be implemented in Bronze Age and Migration Period studies incorporating grazing regimes and textile work. Since the early Bronze Age, which is about 1700, 1800 uh, before Common Era in Norway, Sheep have been vital uh, to herding and farming communities in Western Europe. Not only because of the precious wool that they give, but also because activities linked to wool procurement are social events. Although a large number of studies of wool textiles have been done, these have traditionally focused on technological aspects of textile production and the associated knowledge systems held and performed by human agents. Lately, the potential of wool fibres as a source of knowledge of mobility and trade patterns is coming to the fore. However, missing from these studies and the interpretation of their results for society at large is a consideration of the sheep from whom the wool fibres have come. So, we wish to go beyond traditional textile archaeology and kind of look at what Serena was also uh, introducing in, in the beginning. Uh, by giving greater importance 
to sheep and focusing and in introducing a stronger focus on wool as a product of a living sheep given again and again through their lifespan. We acknowledge that wool quality is determined by the life history of the sheep, such as their age and sex, their breed and feed. Therefore, we wish to explore knowledge systems which incorporate an agency perspective that links human, sheep and technology. This perspective entails that animals are recognised as sentient beings and sheep have the capacity to act as co-domestic beings, rather than as passive entities. Thereby, sheep partake in shaping human sheep practices such as penning, lambing, shearing, rooing uh, and transhumans. So, our project is centred around two overarching research questions, and that is how does the ontological status of sheep and wool develop and change through the ages? And then we're talking about from the early Bronze Age until present day. And how does the procurement of sheep wool create a complex system of knowledge from breeding, lambing, transhumans, flock management, procurement practices to textile production? Implicitly, knowledge systems are investigated both as a production of human society and as a production of sheep society. So what is a sheep society? This perspective is informed by Dimitri Mekus that holds that by the use of soft tools like bodily performance, um, intelligence and history, their social skills and strategies form complex societies that depend upon the social transference of knowledge and tradition from one generation to the next. Such societies differ from human societies in that they are not fixed, stable and durable. Nonetheless, by use of their social skills, sheep live in a society with their own kin and sometimes also with other species such as us and herding dogs. So, um, specialised wool pro uh, production is a long and complex process with many stages, as Serena was saying. Um, and these, each stage requires complex knowledge systems that result from hands-on experience um, in which key members of a community must hold, maintain, uh, control and distribute this tacit knowledge. The knowledge systems create products as well as uh, practices and include a number of stakeholders beyond the sheep and the farmers that come together to create different knots of human sheep into reality. And these can manifest as sheepdog trials, autumn gatherings when sheep are brought down from pasture, championships in sheep uh, shearing, for example, as well as knitting wool cardigans and so on, uh, and the architecture of sheep housing and the ecosystem of pastures. So the production of high quality wool textiles is then a long and complicated process with many stages. And each stage requires specialised knowledge and experience. And it starts really with the sheep and sheep breeding. The lambing, as you can see here, which is a particularly vulnerable phase that requires particular knowledge as well, and that can easily go wrong. So in the words of Alexandra Langland's production starts with selecting the right ram for the ewes. Um, and there are different st strategies also for grazing sheep. One that is coming today and has a deep time depth in Western Norway is transhumans, mountain grazings. But another strategy is the role, say, uh, sheep that you can see here that only eat seaweed and that greatly influences the quality of their wool. Um, and uh, another aspect of grazing strategies, of course, is herding sheep protecting them when they're out there in the wild landscapes. And in Western Norway, inaccessible topographies in the mountains um, create fringes in the landscape where it can be difficult and dangerous for humans to follow the domestic animals, particularly sheep in this kind of transhuman setups. So in this situation then, in herding, um, this is something I've worked a lot on, sheepdogs are vital to herding sheep. So there are three kinds of beings. It's the human shepherd that acts as a kind of self-proclaimed main agent. It's the flock of sheep that are by category the animal others. And then it is the sheepdogs that are kind of in between beings that have to do uh, complex and autonomous problem solving and can be both necessary tools but also partners to the shepherd. And this often happens in kind of dangerous 
hilly fringe landscapes. And sheepdogs are thus beings on the fringe. They're kind of hybrid in between, uh, status of hybrid. Um, not quite human, obviously, not quite animal in a way either. Um, and operates in fringe landscapes as well. So then it's the rearing, plucking, uh, shearing of the wool, the sorting and cleaning, preparation for spinning. And we have a lot of evidence from Martin Norway of uh, spinning from Iron Age graves, female graves with lots of spindle wilds, but also other finds that we'll hear about later from surveys and so on. Um, dying, of course, is an important part of the process, and I was thinking that that's also something that might feed back into the grazing regimes because it requires knowledge of plants and where to find them in the landscape. Um, and then the finished threads is used for making textiles in a variety of techniques. And this is the, the la this last stage of the wool chain is what is best known to us due to extensive studies and analysis of textile production and also experimental work, of course. It's just what you can see here, tablet woven bands from uh, migration period, Western Norway. So we're going to just briefly bring up a case study from Western Norway, which is dated to the migration period, 400 to 550 common era which is a period that's really rich in well, female graves, but also in textile um, tools and, uh, and textiles. So the textiles from this period are very, very high quality. Um, and we regularly find spindle wilds, weaving buttons and so on in aerials. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about the, this deposition uh, from a place called Tegla in um, Tima municipality, and in this uh, one find, uh, there was kind of unspun wool, fleece and wool. There was uh, spun yarn. There was a, like yarn reel, a ball of yarn. There was uh, warp uh, with tablet woven salvage or unfinished wrap. There was woven fabric. There was also, from breeches actually, and there's also twisted human hair that was included in, in this. And everything was put together to, in a sack uh, of left, that was made from leftover textiles. And um, what's interesting about this is that all of this stuff is kind of unfinished. It's, it, it represents different stages of a process. So someone that worked with this, Suniva Halvorsen, um, emphasized that it has a temporary quality to the deposited items. And uh, she says that these are the subsequent tasks in the textile process, focusing on the transition from spinning to weaving, and describes them as being of very high quality. But So there's very fine spun yar yarn, but there's also kind of more rough yarn. So she has interpreted this as both made by a master spinner and also by an apprentice. And that, therefore, it could be a young woman's kind of coming of age ritual deposition. So we understand this deposit in terms of Alexandra Langan's idea that power or skill in the context of knowledge, ability, and kind of learning is a mental skill in addition to the more physical one. Form of knowledge, not just of making, but also of being, uh, is something that must be learned in depth and takes time. This is a hand, eye, head, heart, body coordination that furnishes us with a meaningful understanding of the materiality of our world, an unbroken chain of bodily movements and actions interacting physically with the material requirements. Okay, I think I'll just stop there since I'm out of time. But uh, <laughs> um, yeah, but the main part thing about our project is that we want to kind of bring in the social dynamics of, of working with sheep into, um, into uh, the life world of, of humans as well, and especially these women who were the ones that were controlling and uh, kind of the, the knowledge bearers and creating knowledge systems together with the knowledge systems of the sheep. So kind of, yeah, um, becoming with women and sheep. Okay, thank you.